Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me here in the truck for a little truck talk. I hope everybody is well today. I uh, just want to give some encouragement out there that if you are married, this is for married couples here. Um, if you are in a relationship, married, and let's say you're you're the believer and your husband or wife is the unbeliever. Rest assured, God has his hand on your household. If you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 14, in a paraphrase, it says something like this. If your unbelieving husband, your unbelieving husband is sanctified by the believing spouse or believing wife, and vice versa. Okay? But now, because of that, since since the believer basically is in Christ, that house is deemed holy. The children are holy. I see that the whole house is holy now because of that unbeliever. That household will reap the blessings because of blessings from God because the there is a believing person in that house if that makes sense now that doesn't mean that the husband is saved by the believing wife or vice versa that doesn't mean that the, the unbelieving wife is saved because of a believing husband it means they are sanctified that means set apart that's good news because if you are I know a lot of ladies I see I see more ladies that have husbands that are unbelievers or don't believe like they do you can be unequally yoked in service as well okay ideally you want to marry a, uh, a believer okay you want to married you want to marry a child of God but there are times that you get you know I know couples that that uh, meet at church and for whatever reason over a period of time the husband and or wife falls away from the faith maybe not necessarily lose their salvation but they've fallen from grace so to speak and or they don't have nothing to do with the church maybe they get church hurt and they won't they won't have nothing to do with church and here you have the the wife and or the husband it could, it could go either way going to church by themselves you know the, the wife usually is, is tormented or the husband is usually tormented because they want to serve in the church. They want to be part of a community, a believing community. And here they're doing this by themselves. And their heart is, is being torn because their spouse is at home. Their spouse maybe is requiring them or expecting them to be, be more present in the home where you have a calling on your life to minister, to do things for the Lord, to be active in the church, but you are hard as torn. I want to say this to those folks. Your ministry, your family is your ministry. Okay? Your husband, you need to be there. I think you should be, you should be able to strike a balance. You should be able to go to church. You should be able to, to participate in some activities. But your first ministry is to your husband and or vice versa, the husband to the wife. That is your first, your marriage is your first ministry. Okay? Because if you're gone all the time, hanging out with the church folk, how is your husband going to, going to see their wife live this Christian life out? Okay? Face it, we only have so much time of the day. You work for, maybe you both work 40 hours, and maybe uh maybe you know you get home you have dinner then you go you know maybe the spouse goes to church and the other one goes out and works in the garage there's not much time there what if you what if you took that time so you know i'm going to minister to my husband or i'm going to minister to my wife by doing the things that i need to do as a husband and or a wife and be around them more to 
minister to them. Because if you go to Peter, and I believe it's in chapter 3. I think it's uh, I think it's 1 Peter. Don't quote me on that. Check Always check behind me as well. I mean, just but a man here. Uh, we're all, we all can make mistakes. That the, that the husbands can be won over by just by um, listening or being around the wife. Okay, they can be won over by their by their. The Bible says in the King James, a chaste conversation. That means that means the way of life, their way of life. They can be won over by that, by their life. Not about not not with the word. If you notice that. Because they, because nobody wants to be Bible thumped, right? Read, go read those passages. Really interesting. But I want to give you encouragement out there today that if you are in an unequally yoked marriage, whether you have an unbeliever and a believer in a marriage, stay encouraged. God loves you. He desires you to spend time with your husband. He desires for you to spend time with your wife. You don't have to feel guilty. Don't let the church folk make you feel guilty or look down upon you. If you go to the church building and you want, you know, and they, they always ask, well, where's your husband? Well, I don't know. You go call him. That's what I say sometimes. You know, I, I, I usually, sometimes my wife doesn't go to church. Sometimes I don't go to church every Sunday. But you know what I say now? They went to St. Mattress. <laughs> you know, it's between them and God. You can't, you know, you have to be, you have to tread lightly. You have to, you have to strike a balance. My wife, she is a believer and she expresses it differently than I do. Okay. Many years I have, I have cast judgment on her because she didn't worship like I did. I'm, you know, I'm a guy, I came from Catholicism where we couldn't clap. We couldn't, well, that particular church St. Gabriel, right? We couldn't, you can shout, you couldn't say amen during the service, you know, you had to mind your P's and Q's, so to speak. You know, I went from not, you know, raising hand, now sometimes I get, get into a, a, a spirit of worship, and then sometimes both hands go up, or one hand goes up, but my wife, she's, she is, she worships in her own way, and I had to learn to respect that, and I had, a, I had some growing to do myself, I had some immaturity that I had to work out. She is, and when I realized, when I came to realization what the gospel is, it was, it was freedom. It was liberty there. She's a believer. I see that woman bow her head all the time in prayer. But once in a church setting, she's reserved. And that's okay. I give her space to do that now. I don't judge her. I don't cast judgment on her. And we shouldn't cast judgment on our spouses. You know, if, if you're, if you have a spouse that is at home and you're at church, but that spouse, you know, that's a believer. Well, you know what? They'll probably go into heaven. They'll go to heaven. If they're a believer, they're, they're in heaven. They trust Christ as their savior. They, they trust the death, burial, and the resurrection of Christ alone. They, they are saved. Okay. They may go into heaven with a diaper on. They may not be spiritually growing, per se. Dark in here. You see what I'm saying? They may not be spiritually growing, but they are saved. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day where the rubber meets the road, that's what matters. Okay? That's what matters. So you may be in an unequally yoked marriage. Stay encouraged. You believer, no need to feel guilty. That your husband or your wife doesn't go to church with you. No need to feel bad about it. You you do you. You go if you go to, you go to church and someone looks at you funny. Look him look at him back. Look at him back. Hey, what you know? Everything okay? You know? And they ask you where you're. Pray for him. Pray for my husband. Tell him. Yeah, I think he's lost. Pray for him. You should be getting. You should be giving getting encouragement. From your family, a church, not judge judgment. Okay, big difference. And you might be somebody. You might have. You might be in a marriage that 
that you are both saved. One of them got church hurt. They don't want to step ever step foot in a church. You see that a lot. And you are unequally yoked in service. You're both saved, but you're unequally yoked in service. But rest assured, according to Scripture, God deems you holy and set apart. They've set that spouse apart for God's use. And that puts them in an environment. When you come across as non-judgmental to your husband and or wife, and you come across in a humble way, you're setting that person up for success to receive the gospel. You, they've been sanctified. They've been set apart. All right? That's your first ministry. No need to feel guilty. No need to feel ashamed. And if you're going to a place that's making you feel guilty and making you feel ashamed that your spouse is not with you, you need to find you another group to be around. You need to find you another church. Preferably a gospel, grace, gospel-driven church. When I mean gospel, I don't mean that a church that studies the four gospels. I mean the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection that's preached weekly. Okay? How that Christ died, he was buried, and he rose again on the third day. And we placed our trust in the Messiah. We placed our trust in that spotless sacrifice. And when you do, you are saved. You are sealed. As the scripture states, you are sanctified, set apart for God's use. Okay, so stay encouraged. All right, get in your scriptures. You get, we get our assurance, our eternal security, and our assurance from the scriptures. You can't look to your own obedience for assurance. You can't look to your own flesh to see if you're in the faith or not. Because you, you, you are going to fail miserably. Okay, when you do that, don't look at yourself. Look at the Messiah. He's the one that redeemed you, period. Anyway, I hope you have a great day. Thank you for clicking on this video. If you have never trusted Christ as your Savior, today is the, is the day of salvation for you. Love you. God bless you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.